if you don't have this reset space, this love in your home, this self sanctuary space, it's real easy to just start aligning with whatever the message is out there. So it's like, what's me and what's not me? How do you find that? How do you actually get to that? And it's not with the brain. It's like the body provides the compass. There's no template for what the future holds or or what's coming. There's no template for anything really. And if we don't have this drop down space, you know, to fortify our and strengthen our intuition, where we can tap into, you know, discerning lies. I mean, really how I feel now, oh my gosh, I'm getting chills. The only compass I have is my body. Hi friends, welcome to the Medicine Stories podcast, where we are remembering what it is to be human upon the earth today through one of our favorite ways, which is herbalism. I am interviewing my teacher, Cami McBride today. You know her, you love her, or if you don't, you're about to. You can hear we both get emotional during this interview, Kemi, because, well, she shares a story I had never heard before from her life and about how the plants saved her life. And me, it was just really reflecting on the incredible luck I had in meeting her in 2005 and then starting an apprenticeship with her in 2007 and just you know what it means to be truly mentored by someone in this age you know I remember over like Christmas break time I was embroidering trying to learn how to embroider something I've always wanted to do something I really love doing but you know I was like trying to master the stitches and I'm watching YouTube videos to do that and I just felt angry, but under the anger, a deep sadness that I didn't have my mother or grandmother or someone teach me how to do that, especially as a child. There was not a human to human transmission or mentorship of this very simple age old skill. But somehow I did stumble into that with herbalism, with herbal medicine making, with Cami McBride and I love sharing her with you because you can have that with her too. We are having a huge sale on our whole plant infused oils right now as we do every spring to get ready for the new harvest season, but you are going to have to listen to the end to learn how to save between 20 and 50% on herbal body oils right now. Also in the outro that will be played after the interview, I give a few details on the Medicine Stories 2024 retreat, which will be happening in Croatia this August. I'll do an upcoming episode all about it too, if you're interested in joining this year. And I want to let you know that, of course, as always, all the links to everything that is spoken about in this episode can be found below. Just find where you push play and scroll down. And there are the links to Cami's upcoming free workshop, free webinar, and her online course and Croatia and everything else, the the medicines and all of it. So thank you so much. And oh man, I am really excited to share this interview with you with Cami McBride. You just said the best thing, Cammy, which is I was trying to decide before I pushed record here on Zoom if I usually record to the cloud or to my computer. And you just said it's hard to remember these things with technology because it's not in our bones. And this is something that we talk about with herbalism all the time, that it, it is in our bones due to our extremely long evolutionary history as a species working with plants for medicine. So true. I have to relearn the technology every single day. (laughs) And it's stressful. Oh my gosh. In the shoulders, right? That's always where, oh, after like a stressful technology moment, I always feel it in my shoulders. Yeah. Thank goodness we've got the oils. (laughs) Thank goodness. So right before we got on, I was going to oil actually my neck and shoulders because I had kind of a stressful morning. And then I was like, oh, I'm just going to wait and I'm going to oil while we're talking. (laughs) I love that. I have my oils right here too. Let's go. (laughs) Emmy can see I'm I've taken off my long sleeve shirt, have a little spaghetti strap dress on, and I'm going to 
be putting this cottonwood bud oil that a friend sent me from Alaska. Nice. Nice. I mean, that's what I love. It's like loving ourselves home, right? We, those knots in our, that you're talking about in your neck, those knots, they get crunchy, they get tight, they suppress our lymph, they suppress our blood, they, everything contracts. And then pretty soon we can't feel as much, right? Mm -hmm. And we just keep letting that add up. Then pretty soon we're far away from who we are. That's why I love to use the, the oils to love loving myself home. The first step is to create the space, right? Create the sanctuary like you're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking about how I just flashed on this idea of like that people are integrating Katie Bowman, who I had on the podcast in the very beginning, like um, movement during meetings, you know, she'll do her meetings while she takes a walk, like bring her headphones with her, whatever. And like, oils during meetings, <laughs> oiling yourself on Zoom calls or work calls, if at all possible, creating a culture of simple herbal home medicine, which I and so many thousands of others have learned from you. Yeah, it's so true. It, it's like the oil practices, right? And, and so, yeah, there's lots of different ways to become embodied, to get back into our body. There's yoga, exercise, meditation, all the modalities, right, that are meant to bring you home. We can feel overwhelmed by all the techniques and choices, right? For me, it's like, I I like to create the space. I like to just, even if it's like five minutes at the end of the day or 10 minutes at the end of the day where I go, this is the space. I've got a space. It's like my circadian code to like drop in Mm -hmm. because life is going to bring everything good, bad, up, down, all of it. And you need this like sanctuary. You create a self-care sanctuary and then from there, it's like, I like to just surrender to the oils. It's like, I might just be so far away. When you take that lid off the oil, just the aroma takes off the first layer, right? Mm. The oils help you fall into your senses. That's where the emotional and the spiritual, and that's where, you know, we begin to be called home. That's also why they're called magical elixirs or magic potions, because they are, they're, they're a magical healing substance. If we can just take this bottle of these incredible oils and think of these plants, you know, we are walking antennas. We're ready to receive, but we're just all crunched up. And so the oils, they help us take the the aroma, the texture. They're magnificent, right? They are just magnificent. They help us take off the first layer. Sometimes I just smell the oils like... Oh my God, I just took a breath. I remember there's something more than the stress that I feel, right? Yes. It's almost like the stress, it becomes us. You know, it it collapses our notion, our experience of time. And like I've heard you use the word space a few times. The oiling really it creates space, it opens up space, it changes our perception of time. And it reminds me of Stephen Herod Buner has written about the sensory gating channels so beautifully in his books. And what you just said makes me realize that part of the reason herbal body oiling is such a profound practice for everyone who tries it is that, is that it is opening our sensory gating channels by dropping the nervous system into a different state of being than we've all become so accustomed to. Yeah, that is so true. It drops us down. And then once we drop down a little bit, we can start to connect. It's like, oh, where does this hurt? Where's that really uncomfortable feeling in my body? Mm. And then once we start to connect, then really, usually what I see the next step is we start to release. We start to clear. We start, you know, we cry or we laugh or we make some sound or all the trauma that's floating around that has us spacing out and forgetting it, all the tight spaces that push us out. Those things, we start to go, oh God, yeah. And then we release, right? And then it's under that releasing and relaxing that we can really settle into the transmission or what's coming through or what's needed now or the guidance. You know, I have a clearing oil. Oh, I got to clear, you know, I got to clear out this stuff. Well, you don't just clear out, you got to relax and settle, you know? So I, I like to call it rambling. You know, I like to use the oils, let them take off a layer and then just start rambling, <laughs> you know, rambling around my body, like, okay, what's going on here? Who's in here? What what is, what's in here? That's me. That's not me. 
you know, rambling to me means like, I don't start with an objective. I follow a, a winding course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ambling. Is the ambling word. No. It's like, I'm, I'm yeah. saying rambling. Like I know, rambling. but it makes like ambling is to wander without a destination. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> rambling and <Yeah>. ambling. <laughs> yeah. So we walk around without a route for leisure, pleasure, healing. Hello, body. I wasn't raised to devote and create space and listen to my body or take care of my body. I mean, I was taught to brush my hair and sit up straight, brush my teeth, Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) My grandma was into manners. And so this isn't just about, you know, more beautiful skin or a better night's sleep. It's a personal love space where you just allow yourself to love and be devoted to your body and not just from the neck up. It's like you drop down and you, you love it all. You know, you, you go into what's in there. I love what you just said about you find out what's me and what's not me. Yeah. Everything is vying for our attention right now, right? Feel this emotion, feel that emotion, do that. You know, it's like, it's so easy to just get programmed to what's in the ethers. Do this, be that, be that. So then pretty soon, if you don't have this reset space, this love in your home, the self-sanctuary space, it's real easy to just start aligning with whatever the message is out there. So it's like, what's me and what's not me? How do you find that? How do you actually get to that? And it's not with the brain. It's like the body provides the compass. There's no template for what the future holds or or what's coming. There's no template for anything really. And if we don't have this drop down space, you know, to fortify our and strengthen our intuition, where we can tap into, you know, discerning lies. I mean, really, how I feel now. Oh my gosh, I'm getting chills. The only compass I have is my body. You know, discerning the truth from the lies cultivating this muscle of like, oh, I just got chills. Oh, I just got all these twitches. Oh, wow. I just broke out in a sweat. That's interesting. How do we read the body when it's not us and, or we're starting to program at fear? It's like worry, doubt, autopilot. Then how do you make your decisions? I mean, our life is created by the decisions we make every single day. And we either make those decisions close to our body and close to our soul, or we get programmed and pushed out and we make decisions aligned with something else. And so alignment's kind of an overused kind of cliche word, but it really is like, am I aligned with what's in here? Am I rooted into who I am? Do I discern? Do I make daily decisions from, from what's here? Do I settle into the worry and fear? I do know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, every single day, right? Every single day, we have to reset, recalibrate, refine our way back in. Yes. I think everyone is at a point of total information saturation. You know, I think information overload is a phrase that we've been using for a while that I've been exploring on this podcast for a while, but it seems to me just in the last like few months, everyone I'm talking to and what I'm seeing online is an absolute point of saturation. Like for me personally, right now in this moment, when I'm online, social media, specifically Instagram, I am so sick of people's opinions and of information, even if I completely agree with it and I'm so aligned. And a few years ago, I would have been like, yes, oh my, you know, I'm just like, oh, another opinion, another person spouting what they believe or what they know or what the research says, or it's just, it's too, it, I'm saturated. So true. There's so much vying again for our devote, our following, our allegiance, our devotion. Uh, my devotion is to myself. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I can care for others and care for what's around me. I say this all the time that we are exposed to more information a year than our great grandmothers were in their entire lives. We digest everything, not just what we see, but every word, every every image, every everything. We have to digest it through our being. And we're just full of undigested experiences. It's like clogged up. You can see, I mean, I, I have a practice. I've been working with people for over 30 years you know, this isn't a judgment, but it's like, I see it. It's untransformed experiences 
and people get clogged up, depressed, gray, right? You start to just go on autopilot, numb. I mean, I have so many people that tell me like, I just, I, I can't find my joy. I can't, I don't feel anymore right now. It's just all too much where I don't even know where I am. We're not just passive receptacles. We are meant to transmute and transform. How do we do that? How do we get back into our body and let and find the compass of what's inside of us and align with ourselves. And for me, it's in that temple time, that self-care sanctuary, even if it's 10 minutes at the end of the day, where I just take off a layer, right? Go, oh, wow. Okay. That wasn't me. That, And that's where the new, you know, my intuition bubbles up or where I can transmute an experience. And if we just come full of undigested experience, then we can't transform those experiences into like love and brightness and wisdom. It takes the ability to drop down and digest things in order to transform the experiences into wisdom. I'm thinking about what you said about like your circadian rhythm and oiling at the end of the day, even just for a few minutes and how you posted in your Instagram stories recently that at the end of every day, you work on sewing hearts to stuff with lavender and that it, it's a signal for your body. Now, now I'm engaging in hand work. Now I'm smelling this lavender and how herbal body oiling is that for me and for so many people and how it, to me, like the top use of herbal body oils is how it facilitates deep sleep and just the the inner wisdom that we can access through our dreams and through states of deep sleep being such an important piece of this, what's me and what's not me? Where where should I be actually placing my precious attention right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like the discernment, right? The space. It's no accident that every single culture on the planet has a template for the sky and the stars because we are such antennas. We are such perception beings that we are always perceiving information from the earth, from our bodies, from the sky. And we stress and contraction, you can't feel it. You can't get the download. You can't get like every day we are balancing the elements, you know, earth, water, fire. We are always trying to find balance. And so if we're not getting the downloads, if we're just all contracted, we, we don't get the downloads. And we don't have the space to dream. So the self-care oiling is not a big fix. It's a little bit like every day, empty the garbage and put out the compost. Or So you can be reminded of yourself. We open up, we drop down below the anxiety to be present, to integrate the shifts and the experiences and to receive. It's really hard to receive and really get the downloads that we need like right now. Like, what do I need to do right now? Who am I now? Navigating, discerning, and going from the anxiety, doubt, we're feeling stunned. So many people feel stunned, Mm -hmm. just a nagging feeling. And to be able to drop down and trust again, Mm -hmm. you know, how do we trust and say, I'm home and I know I'm home. Mm -hmm. So you've told the story before on this podcast, I think, especially your first appearance, I think it was episode 20, about how you were doing massage school at the same time as herbal school in the 80s. And then you realize that the lotions and stuff you were using on your massage clients were not serving their health. And you started making herbal body oils specifically for your massage clients, which is what has moved you into the space of being the the most masterful teacher of herbal body oiling that I think is out there. And so I'm curious because I think for so many people, we come into herbalism with, how am I going to fix my problems? What plant do I use for what ailment? This for that herbalism. And I'm going to memorize all the lists of all the herbs and what they do. And for you, you know, you're specifically thinking, I'm going to use these herbal body oils to relax people further who I'm giving a massage to. So they feel even better at the end of this session. At what point did you realize how much more profound herbal body oiling is than just getting rid of pain? Pretty early on, because really I I have this one story where 1986 or whatever, I, it was the first time I was exposed 
to an herbal body oil. I had no context for it. I hadn't even heard the word. And so a friend had been taking an herb class and she brought this mugwort oil. And I was in college at the time. I was really far away from myself. I had been, you know, just writing all the papers, you know, I was getting a degree in U.S. foreign policy. I was really far away from my body. And I kid you not, I opened that. She had like a pint of mugwort oil and I used the whole thing. I was just like, it brought me, that oil brought, I was just like, what is this? The, the smell, the texture, the color, everything, my entire body just remembered something, remembered myself really. And two months later, I was in herb school and I had never even heard of herb school before. I was just like, switch tracks. This, it brought me home. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the most profound experiences of my life. It was transformational, just smelling. I had never smelled anything like that mugwort oil before. Mm-hmm. And so then, you know, I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this. And then the thing is, is that it's like, again, I saw all the take this for that. Oh, I got to relax. And then I realized there was just a question that came. I was just insatiable, obsessed. And then a question came into my mind that shaped my herbal studies and everything for decades. And that question is, how do we heal the relationship with our body? How do we heal the relationship with the earth? Herb school brought up how do we one and Scottish slash school brought up the other. And so it's not just about teaching herbal remedies. Is that how do we awaken the path, my life's path, the, all of ours? Like, how do we awaken the process of connecting with our bodies and connecting and healing our relationship with the earth? The respect, the honor, the connection is the core question that has driven my life, really. We know we're supposed to love our body. You know, there's so many visual, like you said, all the information you're supposed to do this, you're supposed to do this, you're supposed to do this. But no matter what, the external messages are, it's this simple and glorious aroma and oiling therapy that we go, oh, okay, I can come home. Oh, actually, I can feel good in my body. I was also just thinking that we're water beings. Everybody knows how important our water is. And But you know what? Every single set, we are fat beings. <laughs> That's one of the downloads that I just got recently. Every single cell in our body is surrounded by a lipid membrane. We are fat beings. So when you put your intention into that oil and put it on your body, it's communicating with every single cell in your body, right? (laughs) So absolutely. And, you know, if anyone who's been in either of our spaces for long enough knows that if you just used any sort of oil or fat on your body without the herbs, it would still be extremely calming because the fat is interacting with the nerves, the myelin sheaths around each nerve to bring relaxation. But then when you add healing plants with all their different properties into it, you get a whole nother level of relaxation, healing, calmness. And I want to get into some plants and some blends, but I just have to say, I, I sent you this book and it's it's on Spotify for anyone who has Spotify premium, Mastery by Robert Greene. I've been listening to it for the last couple of days and it reminds me of you. You could be one of the people that he's talking about and especially this little bit about yourself and your biography that you just gave that you became fixated on a on a question and you felt super called to something and you have now spent four decades finding the answer to those questions and um, mastering a handcraft, mastering (sighs) this beautiful ancient handcraft of making herbal medicine and experimenting and learning. So first you did your class, right, with Rosemary Gladstar at the California School of Herbalism back in the 80s, and you apprenticed and you learned what there was to learn, but then you took it so much further through your own experimentation. And then you became a teacher. I mean, I took my class with you 17 years ago. And so you have decades of teaching experience as well, which just deepens someone's mastery of a subject. So I just need to acknowledge that about you and thank you. I'm crying right now. (laughs) And I have to say that because I was a drug addict when I was a teenager and I was not headed for a very good place. And oh my gosh. And for me to have the synchronicity and the guidance and the calling, the plants called me, they, they landed in my life like overnight. 
And I am so humbled and so grateful and so indebted to the plants, to the earth, to the trees for saving my life. The aroma, the, 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 the just exquisite nature of the earth, right? Like, can we drop down and really feel our love for the earth and how much we grow and change and who we can really be when we, when we open to her? And when we literally rub her into our skin, Um, (laughs) you bringing up the word aroma again, I wanted to go back to what you said about mugwort and how Judith Berger, who's been on this podcast, says that just the mugwort itself, and I think she might even in that passage, we speak about the scent of mugwort opens up chambers of ancient memory. I mean, I didn't know that story about you, which is interesting because we've been talking for 17 years and this is your fourth, I think, interview on this podcast. I didn't know that for you too, I always say mugwort is an initiatory plant. I didn't know that mugwort initiated you as well. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. And it's guided so much. It's been the pathway. She's a pathway. The oils are pathways to our inspiration. You know, we drop down and we First, they like take off that layer and then we become more aware and then we settle in and then like the inspiration comes. And for me as a parent, I know you're a parent too. You've got a teenager. I've got a teenager and it takes strength, right? It takes strength, but it doesn't just take strength. It takes inspiration. (laughs) Like you have to be inspired. And the, for me, the only way to have the memories, the the inspiration, the dreams, the beauty is through that self-care sanctuary, through that sanctuary, that temple time. Like, otherwise it's just like, okay, going through the motions. I mean, I get trapped in that too. I just go through the motions. Where's my joy? Where's my, where am I? And so the oils, they take us there. So profound. Thank you Um, for sharing more of, of your story too. I'm, I love deepening the layers with you. And again, this book Mastery is making me reflect on what has really called me in my life. And for me, the the biggest one, it's the same. It's the plants. I I didn't know. And, and like you, I was in college, completely lost, farther away from myself than I've ever been, anxiety, depression, health issues. And I knew it wasn't right for me and I wanted to run away from it. And I took my final final, drove to the Sacramento Natural Foods Co-op, put in an application for the wellness department because I wanted to learn about plants and herbs. God, I love that store. (laughs) And that's where I met you. You A few months into that job, I saw a flyer that you were giving a workshop on herbal body oil. (laughs) See, they call us, they're like breadcrumbs and we have to just be able to follow and respond to the breadcrumbs, right? We have to have the space to respond. I have one more story. You know, I'm always asking the earth. And recently I just had this incredible download from the oak trees and they really just said, when are you going to love us again? Where's your love? Where's the love? And I'm just like, God, that's so cliche. Love. All you need is love, love, love. Right. And then it was like, oh, well, yeah, we, it's really hard to love the earth if we can't love ourselves, if we can't love each other. And it's like the earth is like, you know, three or four pieces down the line. Right. And so then this whole, it just came to me that's like, we are so traumatized. We are so stuck. We're so locked in that it's hard to love. I just started doing deeper work of like, what is my heart encased with? Why can't I love as much? And so in that temple time, in that self-sanctuary, bringing myself home with the oils, that is where we pull off the crust. And I had this experience where my son who I'm very close with was not invited to something that he thought he was going to be invited to. We all thought he was going to be invited to. He wasn't invited to. And he was really hurt, really, really, really hurt and really upset. And then I got really hurt and really upset. And I was like, and I found myself like starting to like kind of gossip about the people that didn't invite him and get a little, you know, and so, because what we do is we, we get hurt, we shut down and we don't, it's so uncomfortable, right? That pain, that feeling in our body is so uncomfortable. And then we look for someone to agree that, oh yeah, you're fine. It's okay. You were wronged, you know? And so this isn't the way to solve everything, but 
you know, I could just feel like that crusty. So I get into my, my self sanctuary time and do my oils and start to drop down. And I could feel that feeling in my body. Uh, and then it was just like, oh, I just started crying and crying and then had all these memories of how I was outcast becoming an herbalist in 1960. I was completely outcast by my family. And then it just started to remind me of all the times I had been on the outside, you know? And so I, re- so then I release, you release that trauma. And then I don't come projecting more trauma into the world. Right. And so it's those spaces where we can get, dive into those uncomfortable feelings in our body and not just get more and more crusty, but like actually release and clear the crust and stop putting it all over each other and find our love again. Mm -hmm. Open the sensory gating channels, slow down time to really get to the root of what is going on and transmute it, move it out as much as we can. I mean, I am feeling so much better than I was at the beginning of this conversation. <laughs> you can see, no one else can. That you I look great. <laughs> your face is a is just your color is different. Your face is different. Yeah, it's the antidote. the The fat, the oils, the herbs. They're the antidote to an anxious and worried world, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm finding sore spots. I'm like, I'm not usually sore there. That's weird. But I, I got glutened last night and I was up all night. So my body is holding shit weirdly today. And I'm, I'm finding sore spots that aren't usually tender and they're getting worked out through this conversation, <laughs> through the rubbing I'm doing through this conversation. That's also one of the beauty is like herbal. Everybody's like, they want to do herbal remedies, natural remedies, use my herbs. Well, herbal medicine is not just herbal medicine. You have to be a detective because as if you've been working with herbs for any length of time, you know that using them at the onset or at the beginning of that little crunchy pain is a lot easier than if things are more advanced. And so herbalism is about becoming a detective, tracking your body and just going, oh, wait, what's that? Let's address that. That is herbal medicine. Herbal medicine is how do I track and understand my pre-sickness symptoms and the prevention, right? It's, it's all about being able to understand what your body's saying and how to track that and understand it. Definitely takes time. I, I was recently at a dowsing conference. If you ever get to go to a dowsing conference, I highly recommend it. You just hang out with a bunch of old timers that have been looking for water and and there was this one guy from Ireland, he was in his eighties and he, he was a, like a famous dowser. And he said early on his cheeks started twitching mm-hmm. when, when he went near water and, you know, now he's like, Oh, my cheeks switching. You know, like he learned to read this just crazy sign of his body. And we are just constantly overriding all the little messages. We've got to awaken mm-hmm. that antenna and, go oh I'm shaking a little bit oh I'm what so I just love that story (laughs) like Um, what does my cheek twitch (laughs) (laughs) or I I remember you teaching us that in the apprenticeship I did with you in 2007 that it was I think you know a module on cold and flu or something like that like I don't know winter remedies but you you said you have a tell each person has their own symptom that tends to come up first at the very, very, very beginning signs of illness. So the key is to pay attention to that notice, like, okay, my throat is a little bit sore today, just a teeny tiny bit. And in the past, I wouldn't have even noticed it. But now I'm bringing that awareness into my body and that, I mean, you know, for the past 17 years now, I've been, I've been doing that every time I get sick and I tell my girls, about it and you know what what exactly are you feeling in your body right now okay that that's where it tends to manifest for you when you get sick you know you know that going forward yeah okay so that that is why this is a family practice like yeah you create your own love yourself home space but then it's family practice it's like we sit around and rub each other's feet we do foot baths we do foot or you know somebody comes over to my house and I'm like let's let's rub each other's feet you know <laughs> but The thing is, is that what that does is then you start to know what your family members' pulses are like. So I'm not, you know, you don't have to become a a great pulse reader. You just have to know when there's a change. 
And so you're rubbing your family's feet. You're like sitting around maybe watching TV or whatever, or just hanging out. And then it's like, wow, your pulse is a lot faster than it usually is. And that often is a sign that something's aggravated. And so that's why this is such an amazing, not just self-care, self-healing practice, but it is family medicine. It's lifestyle medicine. We touch each other. We have healing hands and we remember that. And then we also can like read each other like, wow, you you see that little bit of gray under your eye or you see that little bit of your pulse. Those are all signs that there's been a change and that there's your body is struggling. And then that's when you go to work. You don't wait for it to develop. You don't wait for all the kids on the block to get a cough. You go to work at the sign of a first cough. Yes. I just, God, I wish that we all were raised with that sort of very simple knowledge of really tuning into ourselves and each other's bodies. I think of temperatures like you know, we do have a thermometer in the house. We did use it on Nixie last month when we were in Mexico and she was super hot, but I can, I can just tell by touching my kids if they have a temperature or not, and if it's pretty high or not. I know them. I know their bodies. I know what it feels like to touch them and be around them and close to them. And my sense of touch is telling me more or tell me the same thing that a thermometer is going to tell me. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm using cottonwood bud oil, which I feel like is one of the rarer, lesser known, you know, herbal ingredients that you can put into an oil. And I just, it's like gold whenever someone sends me some of this because we don't have cottonwoods here and I've actually never harvested or made it. But one of my favorite things that I've learned from you over the years, especially inside your course, handcrafted healing herbal oils is about just more interesting kind of off the beaten path herbs to put in oils and especially blends that you can make. I mean, I've seen some of your recipes that I haven't made myself, but I've been like, oh my God, (laughs) that oil sounds incredible. I just got to take a moment here and let's just talk about your oils. (laughs) I mean, your oils are incredible. And I, people all the time, I hear them and hear from them talking about the transformation they experience in their life with your breast oil. You have the most beautiful, incredible oils that you make and have helped so many people. Well, thank you, Kim. And you taught me how to make them, of course. (laughs) Well, there's that, but then there's you, then there's you, you, you know, you put blends together that I have never even thought of, you know, it's like your soul is in those oils. Uh, I've said this like for years now, but I love selling something that, (laughs) that people feel the difference the minute they use it. You know, like I I love selling something. I'm so glad I'm not selling something that some people are going to be like, uh, that did nothing. <laughs> and no, no one doesn't feel it once they put an herbal body oil on their bodies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So powerful. I think you're asking about maybe some of my blends and um, I'm getting ready to do a full webinar on that coming up, but just to start, I have a clearing oil that I love. And then I also have, it's a relaxation oil, but it's like, I like to call it unwind and align. You know, most people know St. John's wort and lavender, but when you put hops with lavender and St. John's wort, oh my God, it just, that Trinity is, you open that pot and you go, oh my gosh, I remember all of this. What is this? It's like a pattern interrupt. Like Mm -hmm. you can't just hold on to all the junk in your head, you know, all the worry, the to-do list that you can't just get over until you're passed out of sleep. It's like all that just goes away. Those three herbs, I I do, I call them unwind and align because you just, you just can't hold on to it. It just, it's everything, you know, they're, first of all, you know, just they're incredible antispasmodics, like all your muscles just kind of Whoa, they just melt a little bit, you know. So then all that goes away. And then the hops is so grounding. It's just, it's just boom, takes you, you know, straight down into your belly. And then things start unwinding. And it's such a powerful blend. I do equal parts of hops, lavender, and St. John's work. <laughs> oh my God, I love it so much. I've never used a hops oil. I love hops like they're mm. 
beer for so long. I cannot drink alcohol anymore, but it was, it was the hops. I realized I'm just, I love the flavor of this hops. I love the smell of hops. Oh my gosh. Harvesting hops. <sighs> I, it's just the earth, right? Instant calming and grounding. Mm-hmm. So this brings up a question for me, and this is something that you know, I know you go into so deeply in the course and that you taught us in person when I apprenticed with you and that people ask me all the time is some herbs you want to do fresh for your oil infusions and some you want to do dry and some you can do either. And so hops, is that a fresh or a dried infusion? Yeah, that's, that is, you know, that's one of the nuances of each herb. It's like, there's, you know, I don't just teach one technique. Everybody's like, oh, you've got this. And it's not just one technique. Each herb has like, nuances. And that is, you know, after having made over, you know, thousands of batches of oil, really like there's just these nuances of what each herb needs. And that's really what I teach. And hops has this nuance of being, uh, yeah, there's a lot of different things that go into making a hops oil, but the thing is, is, is it's super resinous, right? It's sticky. It's super sticky. Those components do not, when they're fresh extract into an oil, they just don't. Yeah. So it has, it has to be dried because the different methods with the different nuances of making a dried oil really get those constituents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the hops have kind of like a yellow sticky pollen looking substance to them and hops is related to cannabis. So if anyone is uh, familiar with fresh cannabis buds, it's got a similar sticky resinous to it that, and that's what contains the medicine. So you're going to need a different method of extraction for that the medicine in that than you are for like, you know, yeah, lavender flower, which is why you can't just, I mean, you can, but you're going to make inferior medicine. If you just watch like a YouTube video about because like <laughs> it's, it's nuance and it, it is your mastery of all these decades of doing it that have taught you what nuances of extraction are needed for each plant. Yeah. I hear from people all the time who are like, thank you so much for bringing Cami into my life. My herbal oils have changed dramatically since learning her extraction methods. And ditto. I hear from people all the time. Thank you so much for bringing Amber into my life. Her podcast is just over the top. I've learned it just has changed my life. So thank you for creating this sanctuary that you've created for us to, re- you know, remember and bring ourselves home mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. I just you know, love that phrase you're using of loving ourselves home. It's, it hits, it hits in this age of information overwhelm. Yeah. It, it, you know, when people think, oh, I want to relax, renew, regenerative. Well, like, what does that mean? I have seen so many clients over the year. They're like doing everything right. They're doing the yoga. They're, do, you know, I took my first yoga class in 1986 and it was all sun salutation. It was like, oh, I hated it. It was, you know, <laughs> and then I found this other lineage that was completely different. I was like, oh, I feel more of alignment with that. But, you know, they're doing the yoga, the food, the, the, the right diet, the this, the that. The, but it's like, where are they in the equation? I've worked with so many clients that way. It's like, well, where are you? Which modality are you doing that has really welled up in you that is right for you? And so regenerative lifestyle really involves us dropping down and including ourselves in all the things that we're doing. Yeah. I feel like for me, for sure, that is one of the main learning journeys, (laughs) trajectories of my life, of my adult life, especially, you know, the last five, 10 years on social media. And as someone who loves collecting information, which the human brain is wired to do, so I'm hardly alone in that, is really seeing where I have oh gone astray by believing what someone else is telling me is best for me instead of always checking in with my body, which I have very much been learning to do over the last year. And it's made a profound difference. What I'm seeing online too, is so many other women are in the same boat, especially women my age, maybe it's younger women too, but burnout, burnout. Like so many of us are in a state of absolute burnout from our own health inputs over the years. And from the, really the, like the nervous system processing the stress of what we're seeing online and in the world, not just, you know, all the conflicting health information, but 
it is scary out there. It genuinely is. And like you said, we don't know what's going to happen. We cannot control what's going to happen. This is very much what I'm working on right now. All we can do is be as adaptive and flexible and resilient and tuned into ourselves as we can be to navigate whatever is coming. Yeah. Continue to clear our own trauma, continue to find our love, reset our space. Always just, you know, that's why it's like, I call it like, you know, also just renew and reset because these oils, this self-care practice, it's medicine for the body. It's medicine for the soul. It's lifestyle medicine. It's an introspective space that brings us a little bit more, you know, it doesn't solve everything, right? Tomorrow we're going to worry again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then the next day I'm going to worry again, but wait, I have this thing in place that has me go introspective. And then in there, I can find a moment of balance or just some, some compassion. And then that is what shifts the culture in, in my home, in my life, what I start vibing out and and generating, and it helps shift the culture, Mm -hmm. changes culture eventually. I remember we talked about that. I think again, on that first interview with you, how shifting, how we care for ourselves and then within our families is just one little step more to shifting the culture. I want to hear more about this new webinar that you've never taught before that you'll be teaching coming up in early March about the blends. So you're just kind of looking at more your most used blends. Is that what it is? Yeah. So one of the things is since I did massages or herbs at the same time is that when my massage clients would come, I set up a little bar, a little oil bar <laughs> for herbal infused oils. And I keep people would, I would, you know, let them smell and choose three, one to three that they wanted to work with that day. And so that I did that for a couple of decades and the blends that came out of that are just incredible. And so my blends that I've been working with for all these years, I mean, I definitely, I, I came up with some, but like, I just started watching like the, these blends that my clients were creating. And I was like, okay, that one's really good. I would make up a little blend for them and then they would take the bottle home with them. And people were just crazy over that. If anybody's in the healing arts, you want these oils. They do half the work. And so I have all these really blends that, that have just come to me and been given to me over all these years. And so I'm sharing those, I'm going to share these blends. And then I'm also going to really should be sharing and setting up like kind of like the details, the, the nuts and bolts. Some people it's like, even like, Oh God, I don't know how I have time to set up my self-care sanctuary. Like, what are you talking about? That's just another thing on my to-do list. So like how to really break it down to create that space and, and to honor that time with yourself with these blends that I've been using all these years. And yeah, I haven't really brought these out of the vault. <laughs> You and I were talking recently about even the phrase self-care also feeling like part of, yeah, the information overwhelm and you're doing it wrong, (sighs) but what are you going to do? Not care for yourself. I recently found this journal entry from when I was in college and when I was really, really starting to get worried about my dad's alcoholism. Mm -hmm. And I have this line in there that, and I remember that I was writing it for him and I wrote, I don't understand why you don't take care of yourself. It's yourself. And he didn't. And the rest of his life was not pretty. And he passed away a few months ago. But I just bless whatever impulse was in me. And maybe it was a reaction to watching him that made me realize that actually self-care, and I didn't have that term back then, but that this is something I'm going to make a part of my daily life no matter what. Yeah. Otherwise, like what you started out saying was, well, what am I going to do? Not take care of myself because we default to neglect. Mm -hmm. We default to neglect me included. I I mean, this is a lifetime journey. My, I've been working on this my entire adult life. Yeah. And that's why, like you said, it's so good when you earlier, when you said, I wish I would have been raised, that's why we do this so that the next generation can just have it and, and grow up with it and know how to honor the earth and honor their bodies with working with the earth. We default to neglect. We take care of people all day long. We take care of the house, the school, the kid, you know, everything. And then we're like, 
self-care sanctuary. What are you talking about? Good night. Yeah. (laughs) And so, yeah, I work on just like addressing all those obstacles and those things in our way so that we don't just continue to default to neglect. And then like on the hamster wheel of what this culture is, we're here to create, we're here to co-create with each other, with, with the earth. And like I said, we're not just receptacles to be, um, have things put in, but like, can we create culture? Can we contribute to culture that we love mm-hmm. and that moves us forward? We are here to move our people forward in a good way. Mm. Again, I'm just so grateful for the plants and the oils. And somehow I just was pulled onto this path. And one of the experiences that I had that, like, I really knew that it was a lineage, that it wasn't just me. Um, When my mom was dying, who I was very close to my mom, a lot like you, Amber, and my mom had a really tragic death. And I know we share that in common. And when she was dying, I rubbed her feet. I oiled her feet. And I could feel like this is a lineage. I tapped into this, like, this is what we have always done is to honor this temple honor this body when it's coming in all throughout when we have it and when it's going out and it was just one of the most sacred experiences as far as just really being able to feel the spirit of this work coming up on the um, one year anniversary of my 101 year old grandmother's death and we were there when she passed. We got there an hour or two before. I, I did not oil her feet as she was dying, but I had in the years before that. And she loved it. Of course. I mean, no one would ever be like, you know what? That doesn't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, can you stop? <laughs> it was her first time I've ever experiencing it. You know, at age 99, 100, her first time having an herbal body oil on her. It just, it makes me grateful for you, Cammie. Um, Let's spread the oil, (laughs) spread the oily news. (laughs) We all need this. We all need this, this gateway, this, this way in. Like I always say, like, let's just ride the oils in. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm remembering your story right now too, about your great aunt, right? About oiling your great aunt. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that was that was beautiful. She was in her 90s. And I came to visit her. I hadn't seen her for a while. And she was laying on the couch sick as sick. And nobody was there. And we were just going to drop by. And I mean, she lives quite a ways from me. And on the way to the Sierras, we made her soup and tea and I oiled her feet. I oiled her feet. And she she came back to life. (laughs) You know, she's just like, wow. And I think it was probably the first time she was in her nineties. It was, it was the first, she was just like, Oh, okay. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of what, what you have said before, what you've said on this podcast before is that for all of human history, people have taken some kind of fat and some kind of plant and combined them and infused that fat with the medicine of the plant and used it. My friend Susie, who's been on the podcast too, she's she's really interested in human cultures throughout time. And she's given me a lot of examples from books she's read of these indigenous peoples here, they make this kind of fat and this kind of plant, and that's what they put together. And this is how they use it. And these people here, it's a worldwide human practice that has been lost in the last few generations. And this is why our elders had not experienced it. And here we are bringing it back spreading the oil. You also have another first time free workshop coming up, which is about Arnica. And I have never infused oil with Arnica. I mean, I've used, you know, sort of those like cream products from the natural food store back back when I worked at the co-op then, but I've never used an Arnica oil. So I would like the hops. I would absolutely love to learn more about that and make that. I just really have seen how in the last few years, calendula is just, people are really having enough on hand, learned how to make it in a really good way. Calendula and St. John's Wort. I've been focusing on that for the past few years and 
yeah, so much more popularized. I'm so happy. And I just thought I want to do that next with Arnica. Mm-hmm. And Arnica is one of those are just like, yeah, what is that in the store? What is all that cream in the store? Anyway, I'm going to talk about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but Arnica, yeah, it's the uses are so specific and they're so amazing. It's the herbal infused oil that has the most contraindications. It's like, you got to know how to use it. And if you don't know how to use it, you can have reaction to it. And it's the one oil that I actually didn't have in my herbal oil bar because I saw too many people react to it. It comes with contraindications. So I'm going to get into the nuances of how to make it and all the contraindications, the benefits and how to know if it's a case for Arnica, when's the right situation and when's not the right situation. And then what's the right way to use it so that you don't develop an oversensitivity or reaction to it. I want to get into Arnica. The creams in the store, I'll talk about them. They don't really take you there. And so I want to popularize Arnica infused oil. Mm -hmm. We need it. Yeah. And for anyone who's listening and maybe new to you and is like, wait, I want to learn about the St. John's Word and Calendula. You do cover those in your full online course, Handcrafted Healing Herbal Oils, which you took everything you taught me and the other women in our live apprenticeship all those years ago and all the years you did that live apprenticeship and you've put it online. It's been year, how many years now that you've been offering this? Online? Well, I put everything online about seven years ago. And so many people were asking from, you know, because it's like, I teach you the framework for not just how to work with the plants that I work with in class, but I have people from all over the world in class now. So they take the framework of what we, what I really work with them in class, mentor, personally mentor people through, and then they apply it to whatever plants they've got where they are, whatever plants they have access to. So that's the beauty of having been able to go online is to be able to reach people. I mean, it's kind of like when I started out, there was, Oh my God, there was no information. It was like, just good luck. (laughs) And so the experiments, they're expensive now. The carrier oils are expensive, all the different ingredients, the bottle, even the bottles. And so I get so many questions. Well, what about the alcohol? What about, what are the best decanting practices, right? There's so many different layers and people think that they, you know, Oh, I know this one piece. No, And so I just put everything into one place and it's just been such a joy and such a pleasure to just see and receive and and hear all of the things and ways that people are helping themselves and their family and their community. This is the wealth. This is the wealth that the pharmaceutical companies, they're not going to stop. There's going to be a next wave of pushing this or that or whatever. That is not going away, I don't think, anytime soon. And so it is up to us to create this river, this stream, the tributary of herb, you know, home herbal care and just let it run through our, our homes, no matter you know, this oral tradition of taking care of ourselves with the plants, with the earth, no matter what is happening on the outside. We've got this tradition that's in our homes right? This is where the healing takes place. And I'm, I'm all about it. You teach and have taught throughout the years, all sorts of modalities. The apprenticeship I took with you was not just about herbal body oil and it was one aspect of it, but you have realized as have I, that herbal body oiling is the, it's the best way in because the results are so immediate and because it's a craft that you can you can easily learn once you know the principles and have a you know a handle on the nuance again i'm just thinking about this book mastery i just want everyone to read it um you know you start by being mentored by someone and then you start experimenting on your own and pretty soon it's second nature to you and you can really make it your own herbal yes. body oiling is the way in Yeah, for sure. You know, again, I love everything herbal. Um, I've spent my entire adult life studying herbal medicine. There are so many components. And for me, it was like, how do I connect with my body? How do I connect with the earth? Because it wasn't just about take this for that. What is the solution? What is the underlying thing that we need to do to evolve? And it was really the oils, you can slop around in them. They're completely safe. Anybody can use them. They don't belong on the top shelf like the tinctures and the essential oils. And the the kids can just 
I don't know, they could take a whole quart and dump it all over their body and they're fine. And so again, if for family medicine, home medicine, home herbalism, I just have focused on the oils because they're the way in for family herbal medicine. It's how you get started. In order to learn herbal medicine, you need to be using herbs every day. And the oils, you can do that. <laughs> We've talked about it so much over the years. And I'm just I'm thinking about what points I want to distill for people who may be new to this. Like I love how you've talked about how you keep a bottle of herbal oil and I do too. Um, you know, one on the bedside, probably one by the bath, one in your car. Um, of course, would never dream of traveling without an herbal body oil. It's easy to integrate into your daily life. And once you start doing it, you will want to integrate. You, you know, again, you couldn't even imagine like why would I not have these bottles around my house and be using them frequently. Yeah. I mean, even just kind of the main, you know, the common problems like decreasing anxiety, increasing sleep capacity, even just those basic things, they're just right there with the oils. Right. And then, you know, we want to calm our anxiety, you know, when we're traveling or whatever, and then we drop down and it's like, this is about devotion. This is about devotion to ourselves. Devote. Life is short. We're only stewarding this body in this place really for a very short time. How do we have a devotion practice? How do we feed from deep within? And there's universal intelligence flowing all around us all the time. What's our practice to stay open, to dissolve, just dissolve those contractions and be open to what life has to offer? Yeah. So many layers of this, the Arnica workshop, and then this blends workshop, they're going to be available the week of March 4th. Yep. Four. And then it will be open enrollment for handcrafted healing herbal oils. And I'm logged in to my account right now. I think this course is so much more thorough than people realize it's going to be. You have lifetime access to it. And like you said, you, you are personally mentoring people. You respond personally to every question asked by every person who comes into your space. Exactly. Yeah. Which most classes don't do that, but I'm, I'm a caretaker. <laughs> I admit that's part of why I do what I do is because I, I like to take care of people. It's just, you know, I've been given this gift and really the oils saved my life. They saved my life and they continue to save my life all the time. So it's like, I am able to give this gift back. And again, you know, I, all the time I get, well, can you answer just this one question? It's like, it doesn't really serve me to just do one off questions because it's a, there's a whole world to this, you know, it's kind of like, what do I take for my headache? No, there's a, there's a whole world to it. So I but feel like- not in the course come to you asking for questions that you're like, there's a huge, there's so much more context to any answer I could give you there. Right. When people just send me that aren't in class, ask questions. I'm just like, if I just answer you with a paragraph, it's not going to serve you. You don't get the whole thing. I want you to come and be with me and let's just really develop mastery and understand the nuances and all the details that really go into making great, great oils that heal people, that help people. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to let people know too, that you have like all these extras in here. So there's the many modules of, you know, working dry plant method, fresh plant method, comfrey, arnica, calendula, lavender, St. John's wort, making your oils, knowing your oils, using your oils, care for your skin, care for your oils. Um, But I love the specialty oils so much. Turmeric oil, amazing. (laughs) The CBD oils, Resins, tree resins. I love when you added that a couple of years ago. So you really like you lay the foundation, but then people can branch out into more interesting or, you know, lesser traveled paths. But then you also have all these resources and bonuses like laws and labels. You know, that is really important. Some people just want to make their own oils for themselves and their loved ones, but some people want to start a business. And so you are even mentoring people through that. And I, I love that. 
the people around you, once it like heals their scar or gets rid of that, go gets rid of that bump that's been there for 20 years, they're going to want more. You can, I have so many students that have just paid for class so quickly just by providing for their community. And it's something that, you know, it's meant to give away and not just give away, but you, I have a lot of students that that's their full-time business now and just providing these medicines for their people, for their community and for people online. So it is definitely an option and putting that bonus of labels and laws really helpful because it's like a a maze (laughs) trying to figure all that out. And so I really put a lot of effort into, I interviewed people from the FDA and from all different, from different parts of the industry and made sure I had, you know, crossed all my T's and just put it all in one place. If you want to sell your oils. I mean, that would have been so helpful for me. Oh God. (laughs) Tell me about it. That's kind of my story too, is I just, I was after learning from you in 2007, I was making oils specifically St. John's were mostly for friends and family. And then in 2012, I had an online vintage clothing shop on Etsy that I had been doing for four years. And I was like, oh, I'll make a little extra St. John's Word this year and throw it up on my Etsy shop and sold super well. People wanted more. And so it slowly over the years increased production of the St. John's Word oil until 2015 when I decided I I have to stop doing vintage if I want to do herbalism full time and best decision I ever made. But um, I mean, it re- it wasn't until even years after that, that I even realized there were FDA regulations around labeling, you know? And so oh, yeah, it's just been a oh, whole yeah. getting, they can, they can shut now. you down. I know people that have just been, you know, for whatever reason, their shop was invaded or they can get snappy about the labels. Yeah. Okay, Cami, I'm going to have, of course, the links to everything we've talked about here. I'm so grateful. Again, listening to this book, Mastery, um, when he talks about apprenticeships and mentorships, I like got a little teary. I was like, I am so lucky to have Cami in my life. I I listened to my heart when I drove to the co-op to get that job. And I listened to my heart when I saw the flyer for, I didn't even know what herbal oils were. I was just like, yes, I want to, I want to learn about this. And then two years later, when you, when I had the opportunity to apprentice with you in person, I, and I'm just, I am so grateful, Cami. And then when you started teaching online and you reached out to me, like, do you want to help me spread the word about this? Do you want to be an affiliate for my course? It just blessings upon blessings. And then the messages I get from the people who have learned from you, it's just a pile of blessings and love. And I'm, I'm grateful. Yeah. You give thanks to mother earth for all she does for us. Give thanks to the plants for guiding our lives and give thanks to our heart and our being for hearing the call. I want to tell you a quick story about how I was oiling myself during this interview before we get to the discount or about what I experienced at the end of it. So whenever I herbal body oil, I do my whole body. I mean, sometimes, you know, just the feet or like neck area, but generally jaw, chin, ear area, all the way down to the soles of my feet. So, you know, I'm on a Zoom call with Cami for this interview. And like I said, I had a spaghetti strap underneath the shirt that I took off and I took the straps off, you know, so I just oiled basically my upper chest to that jaw ear area while we talked and around back to, you know, as as much as I could reach the back, upper back and shoulders. And I was doing it the whole time we talked. There's always another layer to come off in another spot that you'll find. So What was so interesting because I, again, generally do the whole body or tiny little spots, but never just part of a larger part of my body or a larger part of my body. And it's just part of my body and not the whole thing. I could feel such a difference by the end of our conversation between that part of my body and everything below that. Everything below that still had all those layers of tension and tweaking and, oh, what's the word? Like a a distortion in the field. 
Whereas the part that I had been oiling that whole time, just that edge was gone. You know, that saying, taking the edge off, I feel like nothing I've ever tried, certainly not alcohol and unfortunately not many internally taken herbal medicines either. They don't take the edge off the way herbal oiling does. So for me, this was a a new like learning moment with herbal oils, you know, 17 years into it. Whoa. To just do part of your body and not another part, you will quickly feel the difference. I also, like I had told Cammie, got had gotten gluten to the night before. And uh, my body reacts really badly to that at this moment. And Oh, I just, everything felt off. My belly felt weird. I had a little bit of anxiety and I had made some peppermint tea that I had next to me, you know, thinking that was going to help me during our conversation. I completely forgot about it because the oiling did that job instead. And so when we hung up, I, you know, looked around and oh, there's a full mug of cold tea right there that I ended up not needing because the herbal body oils did what I was needing in that moment, the warmth, the relaxation, the tension melting away. I also need to tell you real quick, and I'm going to put out a whole episode about this next, but I'm doing another medicine stories retreat this year in August. Last fall, we went to Costa Rica, 12 of us. It was incredible. It was truly beyond my expectations in every way. I really didn't know what I was getting myself into when I said yes to doing a retreat with this company, Trova Trip, but it was just wonderful. And so when they asked me if I wanted to do another one, I absolutely do (laughs) and put it out to the community. People took a poll and voted on Croatia. Croatia is so beautiful. See the link below in the show notes if you're at all interested in looking at this like literal fairy tale castle on the Mediterranean ocean itinerary. It's August 21st through 26th. And all the info is at the link that you'll find in the show notes below. You just scroll down from wherever you push play here. But if you have any other questions, get in touch with me and I would love to have you. I would absolutely love to have you at the second Medicine Stories retreat in Croatia. Never, never thought about going there and I cannot wait to go there. Okay. So it is spring and spring is when we put our oils on sale. And thank you, Cami, for having your launch in March this year, because it's the perfect time for us to sort of cross promote this. So right now, And through all of March and possibly beyond, possibly beyond, I'm not sure, every single one of our herbal body oils is 20% off. And that's an automatically applied discount as soon as you hit the website, mythicmedicine.love, of course, in the show notes. I am also going to give you right now an extra 15% off coupon code for our St. John's Wort Oil. So that will be stacked on top of the 20% to give you 35% off St. John's Wort Oil. And again, you'll be able to get 20% off all the other oils. That coupon code is Sanctuary. And if you're a patron at patreon.com slash medicine stories, or you want to (laughs) be, or you're about to be, over there, I'm going to be posting a 30% off coupon code for St. John's Wort, which again, can be stacked on top of the 20% that's already going to be automatically applied at checkout, giving you 50% off St. John's Wort oil. Patreon.com slash medicine stories, mythicmedicine.love, all of the links for Cami's free offerings, the Art of Arnica and the Blends webinar, which I cannot wait to do. And I'm going to make hops oil this year. Those links are down in the show notes as well. And of course, the link to her handcrafted healing herbal oils course. I'm also going to link to, I did a sort of behind the scenes video of what it looks like when you have purchased and then are logging into the handcrafted healing herbal oils course that's been on my website. And so I'm going to link that below as well. If you're like super interested, but really want to see exactly what's all there, it's a couple years old and there are more offerings there now. I just checked the other day. I just I'm not going to make a new video this year. 
Okay. Thank you so much for listening. You know what? Whether you're buying herbal oils at a big discount from us or you're learning to make your own masterful oils from Cami, I hope that you get oily very soon. Find sanctuary in herbal medicine and love yourselves home. 